morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Document Management Straight Out of the Box. Um, before we kick off, you'll notice a toolbar on the right or perhaps at the top. And uh, if you expand that toolbar, there's a section at the bottom where you can ask any questions you might have. And my colleague and I will do our best to go through as many of those as we can towards the end of the webinar. So a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm joined by my colleague Damien as well. And Damien will be taking us through a bit of a demo later on of our document management solution, DocuWare. Now this is a bit of a rerun really from a webinar we did back in September where we talked about electronic document management within the finance department. But we also went through some of our pre-configured solutions as well for finance. And you'll understand more about those as we go through the webinar and as you see Damien's demo in a few minutes' time. And when you read the rule book about presenting webinars, they always say talk about problems with the customer and then talk about how your business is brilliant or your product's brilliant and how you're going to solve all these issues. But um, I actually wanted to take a little bit of a spin on this and um, hopefully it was slightly more positive um, frame of mind and just talk about some of the benefits that our customers have seen when, whether it's implementing DocuWare with us or whether they've had a document management in place, a document management system in place already. And they tend to fall into three main areas, uh, productivity, access, and automation. Now, of course, when you implement electronic document management, one of the, the obvious benefits is that you get to dramatically cut down on paper and also things like manual filing cabinets, for example. But really, the biggest benefit that we see is from the users on a day-to-day -day basis when they're dealing with these documents. If they can simply store them for things like email or when they're scanned in from a scanner, they can also have to be stored away for future search and retrieval. It just makes daily working life a lot easier. And also, accessing the correct version of the correct document at the right time is very important. So if a customer or supplier calls up with a query, you know that you're actually reading from the correct information and you can answer it with confidence. And one of the biggest drivers that we find is automation. And the great thing about systems like DocuWare is that they have the ability to automatically push a document through a process. But to take it a step further than that, DocuWare also has the, uh, the ability, sorry, to actually start to learn and understand your documents, start to read the data and make decisions for you as part of that process with pre-configured rules. Now, it sounds complex, um, but it's not, and you'll see this in a few seconds' time on the demo with Damien. Now, when we typically implement DocuWare with a customer, we tend to follow a certain journey, and that goes along the lines where we'd sit down with the customer, we'd really understand um, a particular department or a particular process and any issues we've got or any issues the customer's got for that particular process. And then we would carry out uh, what we call a scoping day or a scoping activity. And then we would technically map out how DocuWare is going to cater for that particular department or process. And I would say for 80 to 90% of our DocuWare implementations, this is the way we do it. And it's a brilliant way of actually implementing DocuWare. Both parties seem to like it. And um, we both sign the, the scoping document. We then go away and configure the system as per that document. But what we wanted to do, and certainly what we wanted to do back in September when we originally uh, ran this webinar, was to give you some alternatives. And this really came about because Back in March, at the start of lockdown, we were speaking to customers and contacts, and they were a little bit worried about having to pay upfront costs or capex costs for things like consultancy for us to configure these systems and train the staff and so on. So we decided to um, create three pre-configured options just to take away that headache from the customer and just to give them an option where they didn't necessarily have to pay any upfront costs or any capex costs. And we did this by talking to our existing customer base, talking to the marketplace generally, and really understanding how they're using DocuWare within the finance department. Now, I won't go into detail on this slide because you're going to see that in a few seconds' time from Damien anyway. But we decided to offer three packages, simple, intermediate, and advanced. And of course, simple is very simple storage, 
search retrieval of documents, but also with basic workflow. Intermediate takes it a step further, where we look at things like two-way matching and line item capture on the invoices. And the advanced package is where we look at integrating DocuWare with other applications and using plugins like the DocuSign plugin you're going to see uh, in a few minutes' time. So I think what I'll do is I'll pass you over to Davian, who will be to take you through the demo and take you through the different options. And uh, I'll then come back afterwards and summarize what we've seen. And we'll go through some, some pricing and uh, go through any questions that we've received. So bear me one sec. I'm just going to make Damien presenter. Brilliant. Hopefully you can share your screen now, Damien. Great. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I've just shared it. Can I just check? You can see that OK? Yeah, we can see it. Fantastic stuff. Um, so thanks for that, Chris. Um, before I start the demo, I thought we'd begin with a quick tour of the system. Um, as you can see, DocuWare is a web-based application and it's compatible with all the mainstream web browsers. So you don't necessarily need to install any software in order to use the system. There are also mobile apps for performing workflow tasks and searching for documents, which we'll go through as part of the demo. In the web browser, you can see the tabs along the top, so you can access some of the functionality in DocuWare, and I'll be going through some of these as well in the demo. And on the right-hand side, you can see the document viewing pane with some toolbar options as well. Now, Chris mentioned the three packages, simple, intermediate, and advanced. And I'm going to start off with the simple option, which is the digital archive and for search and retrieval with an invoice approval workflow. So if we're going to capture documents, the first place we catch them to is to the document tray. And this is where we um, store and index those documents. You'll probably notice some color coding going on. Um, this is the intelligent indexing tray, which is like an AI engine within DocuWare. So DocuWare can capture a document or a picture, turn that into information, and learn from the index information that you want to capture. Uh, if we go ahead and capture some files, you might have like a dedicated email account, like APS or something like that. And DocuWay can automatically monitor that email account or a folder in that email account, and you can state whether you want to capture the emails or just the attachments and move those straight over into the intelligent indexing tray for you. Another automated option might be a hot folder. And this is quite kind of pertinent when you have maybe someone going into the office, scanning batches of documents into a, a network directory, and DocuWare is going to monitor this folder, capture that invoice, but it's actually multiple invoices. It's a single document of three invoices. And I've set up so that it will recognize the individual invoices, split them into their intelli in individual documents, and drop those straight into the intelligent indexing tray. Now, more of an ad hoc option is if you are just generally receiving invoices as part of your normal email inbox, and you want to store those, so you can see this one's got a blue tag. It says DocuWare next to it because I've already stored this one. Um, if you wanted to store another one, we can click Store in DocuWare, and I've got a few options here. Or you can just right-click the attachment you want to store, and we'll just store this in DocuWare. And again, that will just go straight to the Intel indexing tray. From within the browser itself, we've got Import and Scan. Um, I haven't got a scanner attached to my computer, but if I just click on the Import option, I could just select a file from a local folder or a network directory and capture that. You probably notice the grey bar going up and down in the top left-hand corner, and this is the AI engine trying to understand the content of the document to help you store an invoice, uh, index that as quickly as possible. Now, if I just grab a couple of these, I'm going to use the US Steel invoice and the Rapid Transport invoice and index, store and index those. We're just capturing a couple more. So 
So this is where the intelligent indexing engine has looked at the document and is looking for these index values. So in the same way that you might store a document in a filing cabinet or a box file or something, either by chronological order or by the name of the supplier, this is basically the same thing. So we're using important pieces of information that we can use for a purpose later. Um, if I click on these index values, you'll see them highlighted on the document. So I can visually check to see if DocuAir has done a good job capturing this information. Now, because this is something that learns as it goes, if it failed to capture, say, the invoice number, and this was blank and it would be marked as red, I could just say, OK, so this is the information I want you to capture. Next time, DocuAir would be more confident and capture that information correctly for you. It looks like all the information here is correct. So we can just go ahead and store, and that's done. So really quick and easy, rather than kind of collating physical documents and putting them into storage containers, archive boxes, filing cabinets, that kind of thing. You'll probably notice the, the numbers next to lists have increased. We should also see that happen in our tasks as well. Now, lists are just a saved search. So what I've done is I've created a few saved searches. I've got unassigned invoices, invoices in query, invoices out for approval, and the typical things that you would want to keep an eye on. And so these are just document type invoice in, status unassigned. So I can see how many invoices have been captured waiting to be assigned to an approver. And if I select my tasks, shortly we should see the tasks come in. And tasks are where you have to do something. And this is where we are going to assign these invoices to an approver. For the sake of the demo, I'm just going to assign them to myself. But you can see here I could pick any user in the system. Now these invoices have reached the next stage in the process, which is out for approval. And again, we can have a look at our lists. And they have moved over to invoices out for approval. So how many, I know how many pending invoices are out there. I can select my tasks. I can also select monitor tasks. Because I'm a workflow controller, I can see all of the outstanding tasks throughout the business and who they're assigned to. This is one of the important things with DocuWare is how it helps move a document around an organization and to each of the people automatically. If I have a look at my email, I'll also notice that I've received a couple of emails to say, hey, you've got a new task. I can go into here. So this is the US Steel one. You can see the value is quite large, and we'll see how that affects the workflow in a moment. But if I'm just working from my email, I can click on a link to the task. I can approve or reject it. So on the left-hand side, we have like the workflow action area, and we can choose options. We can enter comments or anything like that, or we can use a stamp. So for this one, I'll show you the stamps here. But this one, I'm just going to use the workflow action menu and click on confirm, and we're done. If I go back to my tasks here, so I just want to have a look at my tasks now. And if I open up my, my mobile phone, so if I have a look at my phone, I can see here we have a task to approve an invoice. So you know, if you're out and about, you can just have a look. Go to that particular invoice. You can use the normal tools on your phone, pinch and zoom, have a look here. You can see the stamp there where it was assigned to me. So there's a visual history of everything that's happened to that document. But I can see I'm happy with that. I can make a decision. I'm going to approve it. I'm going to pop the stamp next to the other one and click on confirm. And we can see that disappear from my list of tasks. And this is something else that DocuWare does really well. It puts tasks in front of you at the point at which you need to do something so you're not overwhelmed by things that aren't kind of awaiting your input. Now, if I have a look at monitor tasks, we can see that here is the US Steel invoice, and it has triggered a value-based rule. Because the invoice is over a certain value, it has gone to, now I think this goes to the operations manager, 
So here you can see operations manager. If you wanted to reassign it, you can reassign it up here, but we're just gonna go ahead and approve that. Now, if you just wait for a moment for this to come back in, because there's something else you can do. Um, if you've got a whole bunch of invoices that have reached this stage, you're happy and you just want to complete them all, rather than having to do them individually, you can do them as a batch. Click and complete, and that's it. So that's a whole workflow approval from start to finish, and it's quite simple, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of how that might work. Now, one of the things that might happen is somebody phones in. So if somebody phones in and says, you know, hey, Damien, I sent you an invoice, like, two months ago or three weeks ago, where is it? What's happened to it? So we can use the search options and you can choose how many options you want. So if you want something a bit more sophisticated with a lot more options, you can do that. Or if you just want something a bit simpler, we just want to look for an invoice for this particular company and we use the US Steel one and click on search. So if I'm answering the query on the phone, quite often I might have had to have gone to a filing cabinet or look through an archive box to try and find, find their invoice, go back and answer their question and find out what's been going on with it. With DocuWare, all I have to do is find it here, have a look at the history. In here we can see, okay, we received your invoice on the 9th. It was assigned to this user authorization. They approved it at this date and time. It had to go to an operations manager who then approved it. We completed the whole process on this time. So you know, based on our payment terms, it will hit the payment run next week, whatever it might be. But really quickly, you can answer that question. And if they wanted a copy, we could just click on the toolbox. You can hide this if you want to, to focus on the actual document, but there's a few nice little tools in here. And you could maybe email it to them with or without those annotations. So those stamps are actually an annotation. At no point is the original document actually changed. Now, if you didn't know some of the index values, but you did remember a word or multiple words that were um, in a document, you could then search for it. So because all of the documents are turned into data, they all become, all of the contents become searchable. So I'll just search for the word ocean, and if I have a look at the invoice, I can see DocuAir has quite um, handily highlighted that word for me. Um, for instance, if this is a contract and you were searching for a clause, maybe there'd be multiple iterations. So you've got a, a continue option here, so you can step through each mention of that particular word, but you can quickly and easily get to those documents with those words included. Now, in order to set this up for you, all we need is a few pieces of information. So this is the scoping document for the simple package. All we, all we need to know are the index values that are important to you, the document types you want to store, who your user's gonna be, and if you have a value-based approval. So hopefully we can fill this out in 30 minutes, and then we'll set this up and get you onboarded onto the system really quickly. The next package that Chris mentioned was the intermediate. Now this is the same as the simple package, but it just includes a few more features, things like line item capture, general ledger coding, and two-way matching. So if we go back to our document trays where we capture the documents, and we have a line item capture document tray, we already have a couple of invoices in here, so I'm just going to highlight them and click on store. In the same way with the simple package, we were capturing, now this is what we call header information, and it's generally the information either at the top or the bottom of an invoice, things like invoice number, total amount, order number. But what we can also do is capture the bit in the middle, and these might be the line items, and we can see here, um, I've configured this just to say, okay, I want to capture these columns, and if it's, in the same way that you teach in such an indexing, in the simple option, you can teach it here. So if this had captured the wrong column, I can just highlight the correct column and it'll remember next time. But I think this has done a pretty good job. You can see the quantities. But if you can notice as well, but DocuA has also totaled the line items. And we can double check. So the total of the line items doesn't quite match the total of the invoice. 
we can have a look at it and see, okay, there's an extra charge. I can see where that's come. And the actual net subtotal is the same. So that's okay. And again, with the rapid transport invoice, we can check. All looks good. We'll just click on store. Now, in this workflow process, we are going to code the invoice. Quite often, different accounts teams have to apply um, cost codes, general ledger codes, cost centers to each of the individual line items, and they might have to write those on the invoice before kind of passing the physical document. And the idea is here, we want to try and do that electronically. So if we just make this a little bit bigger so we can see the table. And in each of the line items, we can say, okay, so this is the code. You'll notice I'm selecting from a list. We can import like a spreadsheet or link to another data source. Um, or you can free type, you know, the, the choice is yours. We can set up however you want. And we can select some cost centers. What we can also do with cost centers is we can use this for something called split booking. So if you have multiple approvers, that have to approve different parts of an invoice, we can use the cost centers in order to split that amongst those approvers. For this one, I'm just gonna do one cost center for the sake of demo. So now this is out for approval, and we can check out our lists again. We can see we have one out for approval, but you might have also noticed that we've got one that's already been approved. So if we first of all look at the one that's out for approval, so this is the WB Mason invoice. If we monitor the tasks, we can see this invoice is with multiple approvers. So you can see, because I've assigned it to marketing, HR, and the department that I'm assigned to, um, each of these people need to approve the invoice. Um, but again, for the sake of the demo, I can approve it on behalf of everybody. And let's go and confirm that. Now in our lists, we should see the invoices out for approval to refresh, and we will have two approved invoices shortly. If you have a look at this one, this is the one that went straight to pay. And the reason for that is it matched with a corresponding purchase order. So if you have a look, and we've got some matching documents, we'll have a look at the purchase order. We can see the order number matches, the total amount matches, it's within a certain value. So we can just mark it as paid. That makes sense. The invoice has moved over to approved as well. I'm just going to do these with a stamp. So we can mark this. So this has been paid. <clears throat> and do the same for this one. So that's a little bit of a uh, little more of a kind of featured workflow approval process of those additional options. But we also then have the advanced option. And this is really for companies who are looking to integrate with other systems, leverage some of the enhanced features of DocuWare, and make the most of the automation possibilities. So as part of that, we have developed our AMS export tool. Um, and this can export the data that's already been captured into a CSV file, either you know, manually or as a scheduled process. Um, maybe on like a, a weekly payment run day or something like that. So I'll just open up the app. And I have a few different profiles in here, but this is the one we're going to use today. And the way I've set this up is I wanted this to capture some of the header information, but also the line item data, the GL coding and the cost centers, export that to a CSV file, um, but only for invoices that have reached a paid status. So if I go into my 
export folder. I can now see here's the CSV file. Here are each of the line items with the relevant GL codes, cost centers, the total amount of the invoice, the amount of the line item, the quantity of each of those items. And this way, this information can maybe be captured or imported into another application like Sage or SAP or Dynamics um, in order to eliminate that associated data entry. Now, if you wanted to update a database directly, but you also has a local data connector um, and this can be used to update the database or a table based on an action and data in DocuWare such as uh, flag that an invoice has been paid or maybe that an order has been received. Now the last thing I was going to show is digital signatures and DocuWare now has integration with an application called DocuSign which is a well-known or well-trusted solution for legally signing documents and an easy way to get a document like a contract or purchase order to be signed. So if I go into my personal document tray, I have some contracts here that need signing. And if I store them into DocuWare, and this a similar sort of way that intelligent indexing works, there is something called single click indexing. So rather than having to type things in, I can just click it. Um, you would normally just type in a name, an email address, and if you have two-factor authentication enabled, a phone number, and um, I've already got this kind of hard coded in the system. And if we go back to our lists, we can now see we have an unsigned contract. So we can notice the status here is requires signature. I have a task to double check that the signature has been completed. And in my email, I should receive an email shortly to say, I have something that needs to be signed off. So if we click on this, so here's the DocuSign application, click on review. And we're automatically taken to the place where we need to sign. We can apply our signature, finish. And that's it, we're all done. Now, if I go back to DocuWare, what's actually happening in the background is actually quite clever. So DocuSign is going to update the document. So it's not going to give you a new one. It's actually going to update the one that's already in DocuWare. And we should see this disappear soon because I'm tracking the status of required signature. So once DocuSign has updated the document to signed approved, that should then disappear. And if I go to my tasks and refresh this, we should be able to see, here we go, so the document has been signed. We can see the red text at the top kind of suggests it's been signed. We can have a look at the signature page. Uh, so here's the signature. Maybe I want to apply my own signature, so I need to kind of secondary sign off. DocuSign has also applied a report to kind of validate and support that signature is, um, is valid. And then we can just confirm. And that's it. So we've finished our tasks. And hopefully I've raised some ideas around those three packages we put together. And the system can also be customized to fit your exact requirements if you need, if you're looking for something a bit more tailored to your business. Um, that's me done. I'll hand you back to Chris. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Damien. So hopefully that's given you a few ideas and um, and perhaps ideas on how that could be implemented into your particular department or business. I'm just going to make myself um, presenter again. So bear me one second. Brilliant. Just to check, Damien, you can see my screen okay? Yeah, I can see that. Brilliant. Thanks. Okay. So just to summarise what Damien's um, just gone through then. So we started the demo with the simple option. And as he mentioned, all we really need here is a list of the users you want on the system and people that you want approving or rejecting these invoices or these documents that we're pushing through the workflow for you. 
And we also need an idea of what we call index values for the documents. Now, if you haven't gathered already, all we really mean by index value is almost like a, a data tag that we associate to that document, making it easy to search and retrieve in the future. So we then go away uh, whilst liaising with you constantly but to create a simple, secure document management system with easy storage, search and retrieval, and a simple workflow process as well. Now, this is a great way of implementing document management into the department if it's your first time or if you haven't um, looked at document management before. And the price we have for this is £150 per month for four named users. There's no upfront cost at all. Um, and I appreciate um, you may have more than four named users, but um, it's amazing what you can actually do with DocuWare without a user license. And of course, we have pricing options available for, for numerous users. So please get in contact after the webinar and we can talk you through those in more depth. So the intermediate was the second part of the, um, the, web, the demo, sorry, the middle chunk. And this is really approached in the same way. So we get an understanding of your users and people you want to prove them or rejecting the invoices. But we need to understand a little bit more about how you code your invoices. So if we can get a list of your GL codes, absolutely brilliant. We'll then go away and configure this system for you. Now, this is a great way of um, implementing document management because this is really where its power comes in. So this is where we start to really understand the documents you're pushing through it. Um, we can do things like uh, two-way matching, line item capture, and DocuWare is making decisions for you based on the rules that we've pre-configured. So there's a bit more work involved with this package, as I'm sure you can um, appreciate. So the price we have for that is £250 per month for four named users. And uh, of course, we have plastic options for more users as well. So please, please pick our brains on that. Now the advanced, so the end of the demo, as um, Damien showed you the export app and um, the DocuSign plugin, we have to approach in a slightly different way. And hopefully you can appreciate um, there's too many unknowns between um, us and you as the customer. So if we are integrating with other systems, we obviously need to understand what they are, whether we're going to use things like the export tool, whether we can use the API or the local data connector. So we would have to approach the advanced package in a more of a traditional way, where we'd carry out a scoping activity, um, technically nail down exactly what you want DocuWare to do with all applications, and then of course we'll be able to price you with some accuracy. Um, of course, we can give you some ballpark figures on things like consultancy rates and different license costs for our DocuWare solution before then, but to price you actually, we really need to do that scoping day. So that concludes the webinar. We really appreciate your time. Um, thanks for listening to us. And uh, if you do have an account manager already, then please feel free to drop them a line. If you don't know us, then there's some contact details up on the screen at the moment. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in contact. Um, I think we'll go through some questions that we've received now. But um, when you leave the webinar, we haven't got any questions, but when you leave the webinar, you'll see a, um, a survey pop up. If you do have a spare 30 seconds, just to give us a bit of feedback, it does help us improve um, time after time. So please, um, yeah, any feedback you can give us is, is greatly appreciated. So I think we'll go through the questions. I'm just going to expand the question box. So bear me one second. Okay. Brilliant. Can you see the questions as well, Damien? Yeah, yeah, I can see those. Um, see those. Okay. Brilliant. Do you want me to? Um, um, there was one here about the kind of um, uh, cloud and on-premise options. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of explain how that works. DocuWare does offer both. Um, what we've been showing today is the cloud option. Um, the benefit of the cloud option is it includes all of the modules, um, all of the core. DocuWare modules, and it's only just down to how many users you really need. Um, the information itself is stored in Dublin and backed up to Amsterdam if you're concerned about kind of EU data protection uh, requirements. Um, so hopefully that's kind of cover that kind of things for you. Brilliant. Thanks, Damien. Um, got a question here. Um, I have an ear. ERP system, which produces RPOs. 
and GRNs. Can you tell me if that's possible to read an external CSV file for data matching? Sure. So um, when you capture a document within DocuWare, we can do lookups to um, other systems or documents that are in DocuWare. So we could do some kind of lookup to do one of maybe three things, to either validate something, to retrieve something, or to update something. So in this case, um, if you're producing purchase orders and goods received notes, we could probably capture those automatically through DocuWare. Um, I know that I showed the intelligent indexing capture process, but we also have zonal OCRing, which means you don't have to go through the indexing at all, as long as you can kind of manage where the information is on a document. So we could capture a purchase order or a goods received note, um, store that in DocuWare with the relevant pieces of information. And then if we store something like an invoice, you could then, like I did earlier, look up the corresponding purchase order and maybe match some of that information. Um, you could also kind of retrieve document, uh, retrieve piece of information. So if I stored an invoice and there was something like a supplier code, we could then look up another database, find out who that supplier name is, maybe who the contact is for that supplier, and then you could do something else, maybe email them to say thank you if you've received your invoice. Um, but yeah, we can do a whole range of things based on either kind of validating and matching, updating or capturing um, data from other sources or documents in DocuWare. Brilliant, thanks Damien. There's a few questions here about um, user numbers. Um, I see that the starter pack has, has four users. Um, I've got five in my team, then is that okay? There's a few like that. Um, yes, it is. So you're right, DocuWare is banded. So there's just almost a base level that has four users and then one up has um, a few more has about 15 users. Um, but of course we can add on individual users onto each pack. So if you've got a five, six, seven, eight person department, it's absolutely fine. Um, we can price users individually and add them onto the, the different bands. Um, brilliant, okay, so we've got uh, I mean, there's a few sort of technical ones towards the bottom. I don't know whether um, one from was, Man and one from Phil. Yeah, there, there was one. I was, uh, well, there was a couple that might. Um, hopefully, I can answer in in a similar sort of way. So, there was one about purchase requests, which is all quite pertinent at the moment. Um, say, if you need some equipment or a new laptop or something like that. Um, and there was also a question around HR because I know that we showed finance today. Um, but there's a question around using DocuWare and HR. So if I take the question around purchase requests, uh, you might have noticed along the top in the tabs, there was a forms tab. Um, and forms is really a strong piece of functionality in DocuWare. I didn't go through it today uh, because it kind of requires a bit more time to, to show that working, but you can fill out a form. That form can be public or private. It could be a purchase request. It could be an employee onboarding form. Um, it could be a holiday request form, anything you want really. And we can use the information entered into a form to create a document, to merge that information with other documents, creating like, a, um, like a, an employee starter pack, and then kick off a whole workflow process, whether that's approving a purchase request or um, hiring a new employee. Um, but the forms functionality, it might be worth, on our website, we have some recorded webinars, so please check it out. Um, under the news section, there are recorded webinars where we've shown kind of HR processes as well, uh, including the forms functionality, which might be useful. Um, and for the HR side of things, the way that the digital archive works for indexing things like personnel records, uh, training documents, reminders when training is due, that kind of thing is a perfect example of implementing in DocuWare. And it's probably two of the, the, the strongest areas where DocuWare is implemented is, is finance and HR. So I hope that's kind of covered those two questions. Brilliant, thanks Damien. Um, okay. So there's a, there's a few more questions here. Um, so we've got a couple from Phil at the bottom, Damon. I don't know whether we need to go back to Phil um, individually on those. 
Um, yeah, so we can provide some more information. Um, Bill's talking about kind of SQL databases and how that might work. Um, so DocuWare can work with and communicate with any ODBC compliant data source. And there is also an open API available to DocuWare. So what you can achieve um, is kind of unlimited. It is really up to you and your technical abilities. Um, but yes, we can read a, a SQL database and we can do those three things. So uh, validate or match, um, update and retrieve. So we could maybe read a database, uh, flag a record and update a value to paid or true or something like that. Um, we could also use piece of information for the document to do a query. So based on a purchase order number or maybe an invoice number, is there a corresponding purchase order number? If there is, how much is it for? Does it match? That kind of thing. So there's quite a lot we can do and that might be worth taking it offline um, for a bit more detail and we can provide some documentation for you if you need to. Brilliant. Thanks, Damien. I think um, Phil's other question was about um, SharePoint integration. Um, and uh, there is a SharePoint connector. It probably needs a little bit more um, discussion in terms of how that works. But of course, Phil, we can contact you um, after the demo. Um, brilliant. Um, there's a question from Anne about the um, Outlook um, plugin. Um, and we'll, I think we'll double check that for you and come back offline. That's OK. Brilliant. I think I think that can that concludes all the questions. Well, thanks again, everyone, for your time. It's really appreciated. Um, and again, if you do have a spare thirty seconds, and you're happy to uh, fill out the survey for us afterwards, that'd be great as well. And uh, we'll end the webinar there.